Hi, my name is Curtis Whitson, and we're going to have a basic video about the pipette processes. This is one of the four fundamental elements in pipette, and shown here are two example uh, processes, a launch of a reservoir simulator sensor, and the launch of an EOS-based PVT program, PhaseComp. The process is identified by a greenish oval, and basically represents any application or program that can be launched from your computer or computer system. There are some built-in uh, processes provided with Pipet, namely the Streams uh, engine for handling complex streams translations, conversions, and processing. Uh, map links to work with the links program that allows you to connect data from various files into the Pipet system, and a plotting utility. You can also launch Pipet itself from within Pipet. In this uh, video, we're going to concentrate on using third-party uh, programs uh, that are representing applications that you work with on a daily basis. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this project complete and launchable by enabling the resources that are connected with the uh, two processes. And look in, looking into the process, how it's been defined, double-clicking on, on sensor. We see that we launched the application, which has a name Sensor 6K. And then we have two file names, the input and output file names that are input manually. What we'd like to do instead is to use um, the file names that are associated with the input reference and the output reference, so that we can easily change those associations of files connected with the resource without having to change the actual command within the pipe process definition. So to do that we use what's called a relative reference. The relative reference is to a resource, in this case for example the the input resource, and it's connected with a um, connector to a socket on the process. This is the input process uh, socket. And there's another resource connected to this output socket. And so what we're going to do is first we're going to define the input file name. So using the relative reference, we first choose which socket to use, and it's the input socket. Uh, we have only one resource connected to that socket, shown here, but if you had several you could choose from the ones that were connected. And then we have to insert that reference. It has this type of syntax. This is the first reference connected with the first input socket. And then we can test and see how it translates that command. So basically it's got the program name and then it fills in the file name instead of the resource. Then we want to put the same for the output file name. So we go to the output socket. There's only one resource connected with the output socket, so we can just do the insert command. We can test to see that it's interpreted it correctly. And now we have the original command to launch this application. We leave here and we can relaunch the project. Phase comp is finished first and then sensor. We can see the uh, order dependence of how the two applications were run by using the view command here. And you can see the two applications were run in parallel. If we actually want to force one of the applications to be run first, for example, running sensor first and then phase comp, there's one way to do that. And we can simply say that if we connect the output from sensor as an input to the phase comp, then it knows the order dependence has to be sensor first and phase comp second. So we can rerun the entire project now with this forced order dependence. And you'll see the two applications are run sequentially instead of in parallel. If you have more than one processor, then phase comp will all, uh, Pipet will always, by default, try to run the applications uh, in parallel. Now, suppose that we wanted to run phase comp first. We would simply take its output file and input that as input to the sensor application. Now it knows that it has to run phase comp first. sequentially.
and again removing this connector, rerunning it. By default, it will always try to run the applications in parallel. Okay, so at this point we've got the first application being run with relative uh, references, and the second application is still using the fixed file names, but we'll change that. We'll go in and use the input socket. We'll insert the reference. We'll insert, first we'll check the output socket. There's only one resource associated. We can insert that. We'll test the script. And we have the application in phase comp just as it should be. We can leave. We can relaunch the entire project. And this time it's not relaunching sensor because nothing has changed. We'll close down this. And now let's introduce a uh, very common application, Excel. And uh, what we want to do is in this project uh, is open and open ex uh, and, uh, a new empty Excel file whenever the project is launched for some reason. So to do that, we'll bring in a process here. We'll just name it, launch an empty Excel. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. Uh, we'll go in and the first way, we'll write the entire um, execution command for launching Excel. Now to find out um, how to launch an application, you can go into the Explorer and the program files and look for your application. In this case, it's under Microsoft Office. This is version 2010, and we'll go down and find Excel, and here we've got it. So we need to go look at the properties and find out where it's located. This is its location. We'll bring that into the Pipet script. Double quote because we've got spaces there. Backslash Excel.exe, and that's the full execution command. So if we close down and launch the project, it doesn't rerun C sensor and phase crop again because nothing's changed, but it does open an empty Excel file. There's another way to do the same. Instead of using the complete command, we can use the CMD, at least on Windows, CMD slash C command. That's like getting a DOS prompt. We then write the start command, and that allows you to start more or less any application. In this case, it's Excel. That's another way to do the same thing. We'll relaunch Pipet. Again, sensor and phase comp don't relaunch, but you do get an open Excel file. So now let's, let's add another application of Excel, but this time we're going to try to open a, an existing um, Excel file and this particular Excel file that's on our project here is one that contains the uh, SBEUS. So let's just look for that in the directory. There it is, it's the Arco EOS, and we'll just drag and drop that in here. We'll bring in a process to launch that file there and we'll name it launch existing. Excel file, like that. We'll connect the two here. And then we'll define the pipe command, which will be the cmd slash c. And now we don't need the start command. We can just bring in the file. But we don't need to write the file name. We can use the relative reference, which is the input socket. It's only one. There's only one resource. We'll test the script. And you can see that it brings in the file name, command slash c, and the file name should launch this existing Excel file. And sure enough, there it is. Now there's a final way to launch, uh, as an example, an existing Excel file using a batch file. And to do that, we'll go and fetch a very simple um, pre-created batch file. Uh, 
just in here. This Excel launch.bat will bring it into the project. We'll line it up. We'll connect it to this process, which we're now going to change the uh, command of the process. We're going to get rid of this, and instead of using the command C, we want to launch the, the batch file. And that's one of the two resources that are input resources. So we're on the input sockets, and uh, we have two resources to choose from. We'll choose the batch. We'll insert that, test to see that it's interpreted it correctly. Okay. And then we'll add a second command, which is the second will uh, uh, include this uh, Excel file itself. So we'll go in and choose that. We'll insert that. We'll test here. Now the question is, what is this uh, batch file doing? So let's go in and look at that batch file before we launch it. It's a very simple batch file. It simply says start, and it's going to bring in the, some file name, which in this case is this file name, but it's brought in through the relative referencing syntax. So now if we relaunch the project, of course none of the other processes need to be relaunched. It does relaunch this Excel, a pre-existing Excel file. And at this point we've seen a number of ways to launch familiar day-to-day -day types of applications that you're using. Now for other, even more complex and uh, uh, flexible ways of launching uh, third-party applications, you can watch the uh, advanced video on Pipe Processes. Thank you for your time.